So in this video, I want to talk about a couple of key points when it comes to the anime and the light novel and the manga for Eminence in the Shadow. As a reminder, I have only read the first volume right now for Eminence in the Shadow. I plan to read all of the volumes that are currently legally released for the English. So if you do want more Eminence in the Shadow content, then definitely subscribe. Remember to hit that like button because I will be covering more of this anime on the channel. But I wanted to talk about a couple of things because I've seen a lot of comments with Eminence in the Shadow airing as the anime. And I've seen a lot of people saying it's edgy trash, the writer doesn't know what they're talk or doing, like that kind of stuff. And as much as those kind of comments are something that happens with every anime every season you know you got people that like it some people that don't and some people that just come in that are just really passionate overly passionate about them basically defining it as the worst thing of all time but some of the points that they brought up i've seen other content creators bring up and it's that kind of edgy whether edgy is good or not depends on the individual and depends on the context it's the same as cringe like you can have an anime that is cringy but it can be a comedic cringy it's the same with edgy or edge something can be edgy but still be entertaining it could be funny it can be comedic it depends on the type of edge so i've seen some people praise eminence in the shadow for being a good kind of edge and then those trashing on it saying that it's a bad kind of edge and i think it all comes down to the different personal preferences when it comes to animes because some people the biggest complaint has been the chibio or chinibio i i know i pronounce things terribly but the sort of the main protagonist kind of makes up these sort of alternate reality organizations in his head even though they are real in the story he kind of again has this little game of making up delusions and pretending to role play as the side character going around being like okay i'll ask out this really pretty princess and i'll do it in such a way so that i'll get rejected and then i will be the side character that i'm destined to be and instead he ends up having that girl say yes and then they end up going out even though it's a fake relationship him trying to be the side character always seems to fail in a comedic sense and that's what's funny about it but how he's going about it some people see it as cringy or edgy it all just depends personally myself i really enjoy this series i mean if you didn't know that already i've been talking about it multiple times i said at the start of the video that i'm reading the light novels so i'm not going to read a light novel series for something that i don't like I, I mean, maybe I might read the first volume and say, ah, it's not for me, but I'm continuing, so clearly I enjoy the series. But I just don't think it's for everyone. I think also what stands out for the Eminence in the Shadow is the way they went about doing the Isekai, which I've mentioned before, is that they took a bit of time building the characters up. And in the recent episodes, they have gone back and explained some of the stuff with the main protagonist, the main male protagonist. There was also the stuff that they showed in the first episode with a female character, and I'm not going to spoil anything about her that i know but i had some people saying that she was only in the web novel but i actually did check the light novel images and i did see she was from volume four so it seems to be they've taken some stuff from volume four brought it to the beginning so at least from my understanding the anime is well the anime is confirmed as 20 episodes so it seems to be it will be covering four volumes whether it's covering all of those volumes at volume four or not is again debatable there is also a fifth volume coming out at the end of this year as well so i do like the way they're pacing things a little bit more slowly and they're going things much more like one pace at a time making sure they go through each of the major steps of the character going over a lot of the discussions the monologuing so you get an idea of what he is like like you get a deeper understanding of his mindset because he's not a normal main protagonist he does have some pretty wacky stuff going on in his head where he's trying to be the side character but he ends up being the main character and that's why i've i've said that this series reminds me of overlord where with overlord yes the main protagonist irons is super overpowered but to me overlord was always about the political puppeteering and the mind games going on with the npcs and irons and all the fun theatrical stuff so it wasn't just op protagonist flexing all the time yes he does that occasionally but it's not the main component of the story it feels the same for this yes the main protagonist is very strong especially when you see that slime weapon that he used and i'm sure we'll see more combat in the future but 
yes, he's overpowered, but that's not the main component of the story. There's a lot of other intertwining things going on. It's got a bit of a theatrical thing going on with the main protagonist trying to be the side character and failing miserably at it in a comedic sense. That's what I like about this. It has that similar vibe where, yes, main protagonist overpowered, but that's the not the main theme. I know I'm harping on, but I want to be very clear on that. And I don't see too many isekai power fantasies do that. The thing is, there are so many isekais out there. There are so many that come out every season. Trying to create something really new and unique can be really challenging. And sometimes you get those arguments of people saying they're all generic and copy-paste. But I like when these types come out and they feel slightly different. They don't revolutionize the wheel. They don't try and redo everything from the ground up. But they put their own unique spin and own polish to it that makes it just feel similar but different at the same time. It's kind of got that nice feel to it. And that's what I really like about The Eminence and the Shadow, but I don't think it's going to be for everyone. I think at the end of the day, it's all going to depend on your personal taste, whether you like it or not. Especially when you look at things like when he asks the girl out, she agrees to it. And from a first appearance, she looks all sweet and nice, but then you find out she's just statistic and kind of a little bit evil. And she knows how to use certain things to her advantage. She flips coins out on the main protagonist and he just runs for it and he wolves and barks about it. I feel like we've got a lot of dog memes going around already, especially with Chainsaw Man and all the dog memes and the wolf 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 memes and all those titles flying around. Now we've also got the Eminence and the Shadow doing it at the same time. So we've got a lot of those going around. That's the thing. It's that fun aspect of the show doesn't mind or the series the story doesn't mind poking fun at the main protagonist. He is a character that, to me, is just entertaining and fun to look at. And he's not picture-perfect stud muffin from an alternative world that just ignores his previous life. There's many aspects that call from it, that kind of mindset that he always had in the previous world where he was trying to create a shadowy organization and train to become some super shadow type thing in his past life. And now that he's in this new world, He's following those same footsteps and he can live out that dream. I also love the way the anime has shown so much blood and gore in it as well with the whole him beating his head and you see the blood and jumping out in front of the, the truck. The other stuff as well with combat, it can be quite gory. The music is also really good as well and it fits the themes. And the art style, in my opinion, has done really well as well, like especially with the closing songs with different arts. I just think so much attention to detail has been put into it and the fact that it is going to be 20 episodes shows to me that they are putting a lot of attention to detail might also add that they've got a lot of figures on all the different characters coming out i'm i'm just sitting there thinking how many how many kidneys can i sell of my own body oh wait i have a limited amount i can't sell all my kidneys to buy all these figures so it's just kind of sitting there drooling over them going oh these are really good so oh, clearly a lot of time and energy has gone into this series and a lot of banking on it so i personally really enjoy the the actual humor the edginess if you want to say i don't really see that as a bad thing whether you want to say it is there or not i'm really looking forward to other characters being introduced that have already been hinted at e.g the first episode and when she is more introduced to the front line and everyone can kind of see her again i've only read the first volume but i mean we technically get a bit of volume four because of the first episode of the anime so and also one thing I did see that other content creators were talking about is that different feel for each episode. And I agree with that. Each episode has felt very different. And I've seen some comments, people pointing out that it's the different perspectives of different characters. And I agree with that. But I feel like still, it's just nice to have that different feel. Like the first episode was mainly focused on a female protagonist kind of character that's going to be introduced at a later time second episode was kind of a different perspective and then the third episode we get the princess and then the main protagonist the male male protagonist kind of doing his whole spill about him being a side character that's what i love i love the little attentions to detail the little ways they try to do things differently but it doesn't feel like they again are trying to re-revolutionize the wheel just take something that works and put your own feel and unique spin to it it's like taking a piece of art and being heavily inspired and just doing it differently sure the character looks the same like you know, you're taking one character to another and you're doing your own type of fan art to it the character the core aspect is the same but it's got its own unique style feel color it just 
yeah, it radiates differently to the audience. And I think that's what I really like about these kind of isekais and these power fantasies when they try to do something different. And I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like The Eminence in the Shadow? What do you like about it so far? Again, I will be covering volumes two, three, and four. And when volume five does come out, I will be covering that as well. So definitely looking forward to doing more reviews, explains, and analysis on those kind of things. And I'm looking forward to the future episodes and seeing how more stuff plays out and how the combat's done. So again, if you like this kind of content, hit the like button, subscribe for more anime content, and I will see you beautiful nerds in the next video.